Good morning. Wee hours of the morning. I had my nap earlier, so I'm going to be up all night. Um, I just wanted to give everybody an update. You know, I said I wanted to look at the moments of inertia on this airplane. And originally what I was going to do was the same thing that I did with the Comet. I was going to use the same source and just scale the values. But then I thought, you know what, I'm going to do some research, see if I can find a better source. And I'm glad that I did. It took a little while, but... In uh, this book here, Airplane Design Part 5 by Jan Roscom, in the appendix, he gives these radius of gyration for calculating moments of inertia, specifically for a short uh, fuselage constellation. And he also gives the values for the super constellation and the Starliner and a whole bunch of other airplanes too. So. I am, and I imagine he must have got these figures. He must have got these figures from the uh, manufacturer, from Lockheed directly, um, and he also had a bunch of other airplanes in there from other manufacturers. But you know, the point being, this is the most accurate uh, figure we're going to get for this airplane. So when you take his radius of gyration here and you plug it into his formula, you know, L corresponding to the length for pitch, uh, B is the wingspan for roll, and E is the average of the two for yaw. And you'll notice that the pitch and the roll pretty much equals the yaw when you add them together. Pretty darn close. And that's the way it should be, because whatever applies in roll also applies in yaw. It's just, you know, you, you, you can pitch. That's like, look at the fuselage, right? You're rotating it this way or you're rotating it this way. It doesn't matter. It's the same, you're just, same thing. You're rotating the same object around the same point. So the, the axis is off 90 degrees, but that's the only difference. Um, so these are the values we come up with, and these are the original values that were in the file, the A to A figures, and you can see that our pitch inertia here is about one third, and the roll is also a little bit less, and the yaw was actually pretty darn close. So what that means in the simulator is the airplane is going to be much more sensitive to elevator inputs. Um, it's going to, you know, the acceleration in the pitch axis is going to be much faster. And for comparison, I gave you also the, these are the values that the SDK formula would produce. Here's the formula there and the K values that they give you. And I also back calculated the K values, what the K values would be here on the real airplane based on Roscom's numbers. So you can compare those as well. And these, these would be the equivalent uh, radius of gyration using the SDK values you can compare those to the real airplane as well. And so that's pretty much really all I wanted to, uh, to do was give you a quick update on that. So you, could, you can change these figures in your file if you want. I can't imagine anybody having more accurate figures than this for this airplane. I just, you know, I don't see it happening. Um, but I have a theory, you know, it's interesting. This airplane has been now been released to all the online vendors and I just picked uh, this one just for no particular reason. But, um, you know, the feature list is the same when you read the description, 
on uh, it doesn't matter what site you go to so it's interesting when you get down to here and they say where is it now do, 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 do. Uh, authentic flight stability the Connie was known for being a little less stable in pitch than other aircraft which requires a little more finesse and attention And I'm not arguing that it required finesse and attention, but I am going to say that I don't believe it was less stable than other aircraft. Um, I'd like to know where they got that information from. <laughs> I'm going to explore that a little bit more. I mean, if you look at the B-29 or the B-17 and the size of the tail on it, and, uh, you know, I'm going to have to look at uh, like the tail volume coefficients or something and, and do a comparison. But I believe what, what, uh, what we're really looking at here is not less stability, but rather just sensitivity. It was just sensitive in pitch because, like I said, the tail is so large. And, you know, the inertia was, is not very high here compared to, like, usually the pitch inertia is higher than the roll inertia. And in this case, it's less. So this airplane was very pitch sensitive. I'm not arguing that point at all. Um, but I have a theory as to why the tail was so big on this airplane. And it wasn't for stability reasons. It, was, it had ample stability. I think it was more for, for example, if you look at the flaps on this thing, they're huge, right? And they're Fowler flaps, so they go back as they as they come down, and they make a lot of lift, like a ton of lift, compared to like a plane flap or even a split flap. So if this airplane didn't have a tail, what would happen is the nose would just go down like this. It would just pitch down. And some airplanes had a, like a pitch trim compensation system where either the elevator linkage or the, the trim tabs or something were directly connected to the flap mechanism. So it would kind of automatically keep the plane in trim when you deployed the flaps. But this airplane, as far as I know, didn't have that feature. So what they had to do to keep the nose from diving is they had to have a bigger tail on it because the down, you know, when you increase the lift, you have greater downwash uh, behind the flaps. And it's that downwash, you know, that hits the stabilizer, the top of the stabilizer that keeps the nose up uh, when you deploy the flaps. And it depends on the center of gravity position as well. But, you know, if you read uh, the pilot manuals for a lot of different airplanes, you'll see, you know, some of them pitch up with the flaps, some of them pitch down, some don't pitch at all. And it's because of the size of the tail and the size of the flaps and the amount of lift that the flaps are making and the, the downwash angle and all that kind of stuff. So I'm thinking because the flaps were so large, on this airplane and so effective they had to, they just had to have a larger tail on it you know it wasn't uh because it lacked stability it had an it had an overabundance of stability i believe and therefore the control was also sensitive uh partly in uh, due in part to these fins as well right which act like end plates on the stay on the horizontal stabilizer there and that's going to increase the efficiency of the elevator and the stabilizer in general. Um, so I think you'll find if you if you do this experiment, if you change these values in your file, you will find the airplane does become pitch sensitive, and it does require more finesse and attention. But again, it's not because of lack of stability. And I'm, I'm going to explore that further 
in the future. Just for my own curiosity, I, I, I want to look at the tail volume coefficients for this airplane, maybe the B-29, the B-17, the Lancaster, you know, similar similar kind of airplanes and just see where, where it's at. Um, so yeah, that's it. Quick update. Uh, again, there's more to come for this airplane. I, yeah, you know, your roll response, like I said, is going to be a little quicker as well. Um, it's a little, where's the original values? There they are there. So 500,000 versus 700,000, you know. And it's interesting that except for yaw inertia, um, the SDK formula would have actually produced more accurate values than what they ended up with here versus the real airplane. So, you know, the SDK formula is really not that bad. I, I don't know why people don't use it. It's like when you look in some of these files, it's like the numbers they get, like, where did you get that number from? There's, they give you a formula, you know, unless you have specific values for that airplane that you're modeling, you're probably better off just using the SDK formula. It's not going to be that far off, as you can see here. I mean, it's, it's a little off. You know, it overestimates pitch inertia. It underestimates roll inertia. But the yaw inertia is, a, you know, not too bad. It's a little underestimated, but, you know, they're, try they're trying to uh, accommodate all airplane types, right? They give you these constants. And it's maybe not ideal for every airplane type, but it's not terrible either. So, uh, that's really all I wanted to point out. So that's it. See you on the next one.